I was talking with another ESA parent this last week who homeschools their kids, and they asked me, how do I get reimbursed for blah? I can't remember what it was at this point, but I remember thinking to myself, I really need to make a group of real practical, like here's how you get reimbursed for this. Here's the the step-by-step -step process to get uh, money back from the Arizona ESA program for, and there's a different process for a whole variety of things. So I thought I'd start off first with the most common thing that I think people are getting reimbursed or one of the largest expenses, might as well start there, which is technology. How do I get reimbursed for computers or tablets. So there's there's a variety a variety of ways to to do this. When you get into class wallet, there's actually approved vendors and you can buy it direct and all that kind of stuff. I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to show you how you can get reimbursed no matter where you buy the stuff from. First and foremost, I want to talk about uh, what is considered reimbursable for technology, meaning computer hardware. As of right now, which is August 5th, 2024, uh, computer hardware and technological technological devices, easy for me to say, like calculators, personal computers, laptops, tablets, microscopes, telescopes, and printers uh, are all considered, go away, all considered reimbursable. Doesn't include things like televisions, telephones, video game consoles. I've actually been asked that. Can I get my PlayStation reimbursed? There's an educational thing. No, they, they won't do that um, right there. So, so uh, now it says, such as and includes, now it doesn't mean that it's limited to, but before you go beyond that list right there, it's always best to chat into Arizona ESA or put a call in, send an email, just be like, hey, I've got this, can I be sure to get this reimbursed? You don't wanna be in a case where you buy something expecting it back and you don't. So, so in this case, this is one of the things that would qualify it as a laptop, Apple uh, MacBook Air. Now it could be, there's no, brand lock-in, there's no, no limitation. For example, uh, one of my kids uses an iPad for, for their uh, video lessons that they have for one of their classes. It's got the iPad, it's got a keyboard attached to that iPad, and it even has the pen that writes on the screen of the iPad. All of that is considered technological device or part of that technological device, even though they were separate purchases. So I wanna add that little nugget there. So, so first off, the way that you would do this is one, buy it. Amazon or whomever you get this from needs to give you a receipt. And I wanna emphasize this because I know you get it from a variety of places. ESA, the Arizona ESA for good reason is very restrictive on the receipt that you submit. It has to have the vendor, in this case it would be Amazon, and they'll send you an email when you buy this thing, right? Or print off the screen after you, you do the purchase. The date, the total charge, an itemized list of full descriptions of item and services. This has been a challenge for a lot of people. I know when you're doing, and I'll get into this in another video, like personal tutoring and stuff where someone's like, oh, just Venmo me. And Venmo just says, hey, you paid blah to blah. You can get into some tricky territory there. They need to generate a receipt and then you can show that Venmo payment, right? And proof of payment method. You gotta show the credit card. It, it, like uh, a lot of times an invoice that says, hey, you need to pay this is not enough because maybe you didn't pay and you're just taking the cash out, right? That's what Arizona ESA wants to prevent. So you have to have something that actually shows I paid blah for that laptop. And there's a whole whole other, now, now the good news is Amazon and just about any online or in-person vendor that you buy from will give you a receipt, whether it be physical or something that you uh, get an email. You need to PDF that thing. Now I'm gonna show you uh, over on Class Wallet, what you do is you've got the PDF of the receipt. Now you can use JPEG images and things like that, but you can't use like a Microsoft Word document. It has to be PDF format. So you click on start new reimbursement. You need to type where you got it from. So store name, amazon.com, right? Now it's going to have in here your final price. Like you're gonna get sales tax on that and all of that. This is just, just right here for, for demonstration. I'm gonna use 849.98 and again, uh, your actual receipt will have everything else added to that. Okay, so I type that in, it's gotta match the receipt, right? I hit next. Now, let me pause right there. If you buy multiple laptops for children, like let's say you've got three kids, you buy three laptops. It's all on one invoice. That's okay, right? Or one receipt, I should say. That's okay. You can submit that one receipt and you do it for every single one of the kids. You just, when you type in the amount, you just type in the amount uh, from that receipt for that one kid. 
Am I, are you following me, right? So if you have a receipt that has three kids, now it could get tricky, especially if you have a bunch of other stuff on there because you've got not only the item, but the sales tax, which is bunched together. You may have to do some math, which I found myself doing to where I've got to break out that receipt. Uh, it's always best if you can get one receipt per purchase. I know that's not always possible, and if you do, you get to play math games. Um, but we're homeschooled. Kids can do that. So, so $849.88 is the price for that one purchase, right? I hit next. Now I put my documentation up there. Now I'm gonna go, I think I just put a, uh, a fake receipt. Fake, let me just put fake, fake laptop receipt, which all I did was, uh, um, oh, of course, it's larger than five pages. Let me just see if I, if I have something I can upload real quick. Uh, temporary, <laughs> let's upload a picture of Nathan. Uh, this is uh, a guy who actually does video editing for me. Sorry, Nathan, you've been chosen. So I've got Nathan uh, that, that happens to play the role of a receipt right now, but that would normally show your receipt, right? Uh, that you've uploaded and obviously I just learned it can't be larger than five pages. So I hit next. Um, so now it says, okay, you've got your purse right here and it shows the total available that I'm gonna blur out because that's, that's my personal kiddo. I'm gonna hit the checkbox and right there, Computer hardware and technological devices. That's the one that you would want to select. Check the box on there, which immediately puts it into this category. So even if you buy a microscope, even if you buy a telescope or a printer, that or ink for the printer, which is almost more expensive than the printer itself in most cases, um, all of that falls under computer hardware and technological devices. Scroll down, hit next. Um, it then shows right here, here's your total. Sometimes if it's something where I'm like, I need a little explanation, I might go in here and say, this is uh, for uh, my, you know, my child's video learning library or you know, whatever. You don't have to put a comment there. A lot of times just, just put yourself in the Arizona ESA uh, person's shoes. If there's something where you're like, ah, I don't know about that, you might wanna put some, some explanation in there because this is your voice to them. I, I found, I've never gotten a response back, but I found that mine get approved pretty quick. Um, so that will actually be the receipt, not Nathan. Hit next and boom, I just, I didn't mean to submit that, but that will now be submitted as a, uh, an actual thing to Arizona ESA. I'm gonna go in and delete that. Uh, but now it will subtract the amount right there. The, the next question becomes, so how long does it take to get approved? Um, well, it depends on how long you've been in the ESA program from what my anecdotal experience has been. And that just means situational, right? Um, I've been in the program long enough and I've done enough submissions. I don't know if they have a rating or what they use for people, but I get it sometimes same day, sometimes next day. I've seen for people that just join the program for the first time and buy a large thing like a laptop, it could take two to four weeks to get that back. Sometimes even longer than that based on how overwhelmed the ESA people are. Now, we're, we're into the program where it's reaching a little bit more of a mature state, maybe faster than that, but I have seen, I know early on for us, me and my wife, and I have seen others, where it's taken four or five weeks to get a reimbursement. So if it's a financial hardship for you to buy this and wait for that reimbursement to come back, you might wanna take that into account um, and, and know that it, it may be a month or more before you get your first initial reimbursement on large purchases like that. So, I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for being here.